Hello and welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shebert Natze. Serbia's course of EU integration is impeded once again by simmering tensions with Kosovo. How is Will Grade going to go around that? At is the region in any danger? Well, today I talk about that and more with the President of Serbia, Aleksandr Vucic. Belgrade is no longer an enemy of the West. 20 years after NATO bombed Serbia, the country is on a path towards the EU and cooperating with the transatlantic military bloc. But the question of the breakaway province of Kosovo is still unresolved. Will it keep the Balkan country from ever integrating into Europe? And can Serbia manage to finally become a part of the West, while still keeping traditional ties with the East? President Vucic, welcome to Moscow. Great to have you on our program. It's a first. Very pleased to, very pleased to be here. And uh, I enjoy spending my time in Moscow. So you're here discussing a lot of things with Putin. You seek his support and advice on Kosovo. You just came out from the meeting with President Putin. What did he advise? We discussed all important issues on political scene in the Western Balkans, in an entire region of Southeast, Southeast Europe, and also we discussed, our, we discussed our bilateral issues, either political and economic. And just one sentence to use to say that uh, we do have better and better economic relationship and our trade exchange, our trade, trade turnover is growing uh, last year it was 23% bigger than in 2016. This year it's going to be once again 20% more and we're doing, we're doing our job in a very proper way regarding our economic cooperation and collaboration. Speaking about most important political issues, we have always had that kind of support and assistance and dare to say an endorsement in the most important issues, the really most significant issues for Serbia. I felt very comfortable in Putin's words on further support for Serbia's territorial integrity, which is not only an issue of Serbia, which became an issue of many sovereign states that were put in jeopardy because of unilateral actions by some other, either territories, either people, either nations. So if you allow me, let's go uh, point by point regarding that, especially Kosovo. It's I'm always relevant. Disposal. It's always relevant, but especially now, uh, it's been back in the news because you are seeking to mend ties with Kosovo, but you're saying it has to be a two-way street. You're in favor of the so-called land deal that would actually see Kosovo divided on ethnic lines. Right now, Pristina is saying no partition to any part of Kosovo. Firstly, I was not saying that we should do, and I have never mentioned it, a sort of partition by and on or based on ethnic lines. There was only one sentence that I have always been saying. We need to reach, we need to find a compromising solution between Serbs and Albanians. Which means that it cannot be the case that Albanians get everything and Serbs get nothing. Albanians gain absolutely everything that I that have ever dreamed of, and Serbs got absolutely nothing. That was my, and that was our, that was Serbia's first and the only position that we have never left. Then we faced response from different sides. Russia was saying, okay, if Serbia agrees on something, because we consider Serbia as a sovereign state, if Serbia agrees on something, we'll support it. Which was very much in accordance with, or absolutely in accordance with international public law. And that's why we respected and appreciated that political attitude of President Putin and Russia very much. On the other hand, we got a very clear response from several EU countries they were totally against it. They were saying, just to clear it up, that uh, if that happens, Serbia will open Pandora's box, new Pandora's box about border changes and everything Do you disagree? Else. I totally disagree, and I'll tell you why. 
How can we open Pandora's box? Who opened those Pandora's box in 2008? Accepting, acknowledging, and recognizing an independence of Kosovo. Unilaterally proclaimed. They were doing so, not us. When they say to me, okay, we don't want to change the borders, I immediately reply to them saying, okay, it means that Kosovo is a part of Serbia. There are no border changes. No, 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 we accept border changes that we did 10 years ago, but now you cannot do it. Even if you would agree on that with your counterparts, your Albanian counterparts. Then you say, hey, where are the principles? Are there any principles? You can do it, you can change our territory, and we cannot do it. It was not Pandora box that was opened 10 years ago, but it is Pandora's box that is going to be open Well, that's today. the way they see it. They think we're opening Pandora's box. They mean Serbs living in Bosnia-Herzegovina or the Albanian minority in Macedonia. What, what do you say be? to them to that? I say to them, okay, if you, first of all, we do support territorial integrity of Bosnia, we have never mentioned anything about it. But I speak about Kosovo. You people, firstly, agreed, then recognized Secession of Montenegro from former, Yugoslav uh, from former Yugoslavia. Am I right? It happened in 2006, if you remember. In 2008, you took and you recognized an independence of Kosovo from Serbia. How did you derive that right? What was the way that you derived that right? And that was not an opening of Pandora's box. And now it would be an opening of Pandora's box. Even though if Serbs and Albanians would decide making such an arrangement. That's, that's a hypocrisy. But like you've mentioned in your answer in the beginning, they're still against it. I mean, yes, Russia supports you. America is even saying that if Serbia and Kosovo find a mutual agreement, we'll support it. But European partners are saying Pandora's box. So how healthy is it to actually try to mend ties with Kosovo? Because you're trying to do that as much as you can, while your most important partners, because you, you want to be part of the EU, are saying, no, 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 go on, keep on fighting. How healthy is it? That's a weird situation. Yeah, you define it in this way. I will define it in a slightly different way. I would say it's a very complicated situation. But at the same time, we have different agenda on some other issues, which is NATO membership. Serbia most probably very soon will be the only country in the region that is not aspiring NATO membership, and we don't hide it. There are different reasons for that political attitude from Serbian side, including everything that happened to our country and to our people in 1999. And that's what makes the difference between Serbia and all the others. That's another difference. That's, we, are, we are in a very, very special case. And uh, you see now the situation in Macedonia. People didn't decide and people didn't say yes on that referendum. But doesn't matter who cares about the referendum results. They'll go for it, you know. Yeah, they said the results were great, even though less than 50% of people showed up. They don't mind. If I may say, we think that whatever Macedonia and Greece, and Greece might agree on something, we would support it. And that would be very important for them. But you cannot undermine people's decision. You cannot undermine people's will. People in the Balkans, they expect respect as well as all the others. They just expect a normal appreciation and they want to be heard. And that's what I wanted to say, speaking about Serbia and Russia. We are heard. That's very important for us. And we feel that we are respected by our Russian colleagues, by our Russian friends. Is my impression right when I say that you're probably first president in a long time who is actually open to mending ties with Kosovo, and you speak about it, but you don't get much response from the Kosovo side. You're, you're right. We signed the Brussels Agreement, and we fulfilled all our obligations from Brussels Agreement. But the other side, they had only one obligation, which, which was 40-45% of overall Brussels Agreement. And that obligation was uh, foundation and establishment of 
Serb community or Serb associ association, doesn't matter how you call it. They didn't do it. They didn't do a single small step forward on this issue. And it was tolerated by international community. When I say international community, it's an euphemism for the Western world. They said nothing to them. There, it was, there were no remarks. But we delivered absolutely everything on different issues, regional police, justice and judiciary issue, telecom issue, and many other issues. They did nothing. And we said, okay, are you going to fulfill it or not? Are you going to make pressure on your guys to fulfill what they signed and you co-signed together with us that paper? And then we got the response, okay, we'll speak about general resolution of your problems. And I said, okay, let us speak about it. We are open to speak about it. And from the very beginning, I hoped that some people in Pristina, as well as many people in Brussels, would do their best to reach a compromising solution. Now, I can tell you that I will, I'll always be ready to carry on with the dialogue. I'll always be ready to negotiate on whatever you want. But in the meantime, we lost our trust and confidence in Albanian side that they really want to reach any kind of compromising solution. Because they were doing their best, a lot of provocations, and they were doing absolutely everything just to undermine all our efforts and to, instead of lowering the expectation of their people, they were expanding their expectations. And you see that there is no fertile ground for possible arrangement. But anyway, Serbia will always be ready to continue to resume with a process of dialogue, but I'm not expecting very much as a result of that kind of... Mr. President, we're going to take a short break right now. When we're back, we'll continue talking to Aleksandr Vucic, the Serbian president, talking about Serbia's accession to the EU and its relations with the United States. Stay with us. back with Aleksandr Fucic, Serbian leader. Mr. President, you've just mobilized Serbian army because the Kosovo leader went to visit the uh, area with the majority. No, it's not Serbs because of there. that. It's not because of that. Why was it? It's, it's a view from outside. People would say, okay, those guys wanted to visit one part of Kosovo and then you mobilized your army. No. No, they broke we the had... agreement. I understand why you mobilized the army. Yes, they were coming there with uh, machine guns, long rifles, and everything else. And they don't have right to come there with that kind of weaponry. That was our verbal arrangement, although there is a statement done by NATO, plus Albanians and Serbs after Brussels agreement we made, also in Brussels, that there were two preconditions if someone would like to bring, let's say, machine guns to the north of Kosovo. One and the most important precondition was, and it still is, the consent of local Serb community. They didn't ask even any single Serb about saying yes to the visit of Hashim Tachi. And it's not about his visit, it's about weaponry his people were using. And that was another provocation. And they wanted, you know, to show that they were in charge, that they can do it when, whenever they want and whatever they want. Of course, to frighten Serbs once again, that's what they wanted to do. And they did it. And the other precondition was consent of NATO. We don't know what NATO was doing, but if there was a consent of NATO, there was not fulfilled, and that's a cumulative precondition, number one, which was consent of Serb people, Serbian people. And they didn't have it at all. That's why we needed to react. Otherwise, they can conquer north of Kosovo, they can expel all our people, and everyone from Western community would say, or most of them would say, well, okay, it happens, you know. Now you should live in peace, and now we have borders in a way that we wanted. And Serbia cannot agree on this. So, 
I mean, it would seem to me... Our when... job was just to send a strong message that we would protect our people from the guys that would use heavy weaponry against our guys in the north of Kosovo. I think the message was received yes. uh, and well heard. You mentioned in the beginning that you're the only country in the region that doesn't aspire to be part of NATO, but yes. you know, you and NATO still enjoy great relations 20 years after the bombings. You do mutual exercises, uh, they conduct uh, exercises on your territory, and then when it comes down to it, you just and mentioned... We do, and we do the same exercises with Russia. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you when know, you come down to it, Russia. NATO didn't do anything with this incident. It's a NATO-controlled territory. Do you, what do you get in return when you cooperate with NATO this much? Do you, get, do you feel like you get in return as much as you would have liked to? Put yourself into our shoes, please. We are not Russia. We are not a big country. Although we are the biggest in the Western Balkan, we are a small country. And we have to protect our country, we have to protect our people, and we have to maintain peace, tranquility, and stability within the region. We need to boost our economic development. We need to attract more of investors. We cannot say everything that we think to everyone. Just cannot. It's a different position. We are not as big as Russia. We are not as strong as Russia. We have to keep the momentum of asking and trying to carry on with the same or even bigger and better level of cooperation with all the others. But at the same time, don't forget, it's not only about NATO aspirations that we don't have it. Serbia is the only country that didn't impose any sanctions against Russia. Do you really think that it's an easy decision for Serbia? Do you really think that we didn't face a lot of pressure from different sides on this issue. Yes, we did. Mr. President, I have to ask you. I mean, you've said it so many times that you will never sacrifice your EU membership with your relationship with Russia. You've been showing a great example of how not to do that. But the day will come, and you know it will come, when they'll say, Alexander, why don't you join the sanctions and your membership to the EU pro the process of the ascending ascendance of Serbia to the EU will be speeded up. This day will come. Now, this sentence may sound differently, in different variations, but you get the point. What are you going to do? I got the point. You are very well prepared for this interview. And, uh, but to tell you the truth, I'm listening the same question for more than five years. First of all, we'll see whether that will happen. Second, we'll see in which form that might happen. Third, we'll see what European Union will look like within four, five, six years. Because, or even seven, eight years, I don't know. Because that's, that should be our last obligation before we join EU. And whether it's going to happen anyway, because the most important precondition for our EU membership is to resolve Kosovo issue. That's much bigger and much more problematic issue for us than any other issues. As you can see, there are many but or if. And then we'll see, and I hope that we'll be strong enough and respected enough and that everyone will always appreciate and respect our relationship towards Russian people and towards Russia. We cannot change ourselves on this issue, and hopefully people in Europe will understand that. But I'm saying to you once again, who knows what will happen within several years. So then let me ask you about your aspirations to become part of EU, because I know you were very enthusiastic about it when you came in power, well, while you were Prime Minister. Once you're uh, president, you always stated that, yes, Serbia wants to be part of EU. Let's say we live in an ideal world and you and Kosovo resolve this issue overnight. It happens. So that's not an obstacle anymore. You right now, like you said, you never it's, know what it's going to be. It's not called. the case, but okay. Okay, but let's, because it's always like we, do, we, okay. we have the Kosovo issue and then we never talk about Serbia becoming part of EU. Let's forget about Kosovo for instance. Let's say you resolved it overnight. And then 
you don't have any more obstacles to go to the EU. Are you still as enthusiastic? I mean, seeing what's going on, there is South that's getting poorer, North that's getting richer, and there are like Eastern Europe and Western Europe that are actually bickering about migration and so many more issues. And these elections that are coming up, they're going to completely change the whole configuration and the paradigm in which EU exists. I mean, it's kind of like a fractured union right now. Why do you want to be part of it so much? It's not about whether someone wants to do something desperately or not. It's something about rational decisions. Serbia is on its EU path because of several reasons. One of it is, okay, we want to belong to that type of society. Another one is, we want to, we have the biggest percent of our trade exchanges with EU countries, it's 68% of our trade, overall trade turnover, plus 20% with regional countries. Everything else is Russia plus China. And a small portion with Turkey. We are situated in that part of the world. But at the same time, I don't think that that will exclude not only our friendship, but very close ties with Russia. And I don't hide it, as you know, you were, because you were insisting from the very first moment of our interview, uh, everything that I was saying about European Union, which I don't hide. But you don't mention the fact that even in Washington or in Brussels, or today in English language, I'm saying that we'll keep our very close ties with Russia always. And we don't know what will happen in the future. We still don't know. But uh, I think that our European partners will always understand Serbia on our issue with Russia. I just have maybe one last question or two about President Trump because he's a very unconventional American leader. I mean, his views of the world and the way America should be are unlike the ones of his predecessors. He's not very sympathetic towards EU. I mean, he's declaring tariff wars in China, European Union, doesn't really like NATO because he says, like, everyone should pay up, not only America. Does that change anything for Serbia, Serbia's stance? Uh, um, you've invited him to come to Serbia, and yeah, he said yeah, Serbians want to be friends with him. But he didn't come to Serbia so far. Anyway, we Serbs, they prefer, no doubt, Trump. Than Obama? Oh, come on. Why? I don't know, because Serbs have always thought that it was Democrats' fault when they launched that aggression against Serbia, and they always supported Republican Party within the U.S. and Trump, as you said, he is pretty much unconventional, you know, and we know only few things about his politics, almost nothing about his politics in the Balkans, but at least John Bolton, he opened the doors for possible arrangement between, between Belgrade and Pristina, and that's what we appreciated. That's slightly a change of their politics, but We'll have to see, we'll have to wait, we'll have to see. I cannot assess it, I cannot estimate it. Because I'm asking you, no. so the Russians were also excited about Trump winning, because we also thought that Republicans were better than Democrats for Russia. And Putin and Trump like each other on a personal uh, level, but then there's the establishment that wouldn't let him do that's, anything. That's why I'm a very, why I have a very rational approach. I'm not excited, I'm not emotional at all, I'm very rational about it, and that's why I said to you, we need to wait to see what is going to be the final result of their stances, their position, and their attitude over Serbia and uh, over Western Balkans. All right, Mr. President, thank you very much for this insightful interview. Thank you, thank you very much. And I was, to tell you the truth, uh, pretty much positively surprised by the knowledge that you have shown. And there are very few politicians in Serbia that would understand all the questions and all the issues that you have just tackled. Thank you. I love your country and I wish you all the best of luck. We love your country and we wish all the best to your country and we hope that uh, we'll be able to preserve and to maintain the best possible re relationship between our two countries. Amen.